Are you thinking of visiting Auckland, Tambuati or Marula in the Kruger National Park? In this video, I'll not only tell you what my thoughts are on each camp, but also what animals you can expect to see around them. Hi, I'm Phileas Dane and I'm the safari expert. And this video features Open Rest Camp in the Kruger National Park, along with its two smaller sister camps, Tambuati and Marilla. I'll start off the video by telling you a little bit more about each camp, and then I'll end off by telling you what you can expect to see in the area around these three camps. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, always check out the description below for any important links and information like how you can make a booking at any of these camps and also the two best resources for planning a Kruger trip namely Kruger self-drive routes roads and ratings that you can order online as well as the Kruger Explorer app that you can download on the app store or on the Google Play store if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like subscribe to the channel and please feel free to ask any questions about Kruger in the comments below let's start with open Open is both a rest camp and an entrance gate, and it lies about 45 minutes drive southeast of Hootspreid in South Africa's Limpopo province. If you've never entered here before, Open can seem a little bit confusing, because first you have to go through an outer boom gate before driving approximately 10 kilometers to reception. Although you're technically still outside the Kruger National Park, you could bump into the Big Five here because this is a section of road where the two old boundary fences between the Manialeti on the right and the Timbavati on the left were removed many years ago. The first building you'll see after entering the boom gate is reception, where you'll fill in your registration and indemnity form and collect your entry code. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Next to it is a filling station where you can fill up and deflate your tires a bit before entering at the official entrance gate just around the corner. Okay, thanks so much. Have a good one. See you then. Bye bye. Cheers, cheers. And this is where it gets even more confusing. Even though you've already gone through two gates, you're still not inside the game viewing area yet because just down the road you'll enter Open Rest Camp itself. Open is one of the smallest camps in the Kruger National Park, with only a handful of near identical bungalows situated in a row along a boundary fence that overlooks a small waterhole that's unfortunately a bit far away to see clearly. There are however a few benches here to sit on if you're just looking for a quiet place to relax in camp. Nearby is a swimming pool that also overlooks the waterhole, as well as a small shop that sells everything from firewood and fresh sandwiches to an assortment of wines and Kruger memorabilia. You can also buy your Kruger map here and order a fresh cappuccino from the coffee hut outside before checking the camp sightings board to see what animals have been spotted over the past couple of days. But we'll get to the game viewing a little bit later. Despite its location at the edge of the park and its small size, Open actually has a very relaxed feel to it, and its lush gardens attract a great variety of birds, including bush shrikes, woodpeckers, kingfishers, and many more. Once you drive east from the rest camp, you're finally properly inside the park. But before I tell you which routes I like to drive, let's quickly talk about Open's two sister camps, Tambuti and Marula, which lie next to each other about 10 minutes from Open itself. Tambuti is located in the lush thickets found on the banks of the Timbavati River and has hardly any facilities other than a series of safari tents tucked away on the edge of the riverbed itself. It is however divided into two sections, one with older safari tents and one with newer, more luxurious ones. The older safari tents are very basic and although you have a braai area overlooking the riverbed, a small dining table on the deck as well as a fridge in a cage to protect it from marauding baboons and scavenging honey badgers, you have to share ablution facilities and bring your own crockery and cutlery. There is however a couple of small kitchenettes with sinks, hot plates and urns. The newer tents also have great views over the river and they have ensuite bathrooms as well as fully equipped kitchenettes on the deck. If you prefer to camp, you can stay at Marula, which is located a stone's throw away from Tambuti. This small campground has no shortage of shade thanks to all the massive trees on the bank of the Timbavati River. In fact, those spots next to the fence that overlook the riverbed are the most popular, so make sure you arrive here between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning if you want to give yourself a good chance of getting one of them. Each stand has a braai grid as well as a shared power box, 
and campers can wash their dishes, cook some pasta, and get boiling water from a communal kitchenette, next to which there's also a communal fridge and a deep freeze. Like all of Kruger's campsites, it also has a large, clean ablution block. If you ask me, all three of these little camps are great to stay in, but the question is, are you prepared for the challenges that lie outside when you go on game drive? We're in the park, woohoo! You see, when you leave either of these camps early in the morning, you're driving directly into the sun, making it very difficult to see. And there's no escaping the glare for at least the first half an hour of your drive, except if you go south on the extremely quiet and monotonous S140 gravel road to Talamati Bushveld Camp, which I hardly ever drive. One consolation is the fact that game viewing is extremely good on this first section of the H7 tar road. But just as you bump into your first line, you're presented with a second challenge from Open. Very, very heavy traffic. If you combine all the visitors from three small camps, it quickly becomes a lot. And then add to those all the day visitors that enter early in the mornings as well. And before you know it, it looks like a highway. Unfortunately, many of these cars are staff members that are in a rush from Open to Satara, often pushing to get past, spoiling what would otherwise have been great sightings. I much prefer the drive back to camp on the H7 late in the afternoon, when traffic is a bit more spread out. To give you an idea of just how good game viewing can get on the H7, when I collected some footage for this video, I actually saw cheetahs where the S36 and S39 join the H7, a curious hyena pup in the road near the Bobby Janskrans turnoff, and a pack of wild dogs running along the Timbavati River at one of the river viewpoints. The pack eventually made its way to the road, but unfortunately I had to head back to camp before the gates closed. Always keep an eye on the riverbed itself when you're driving along the H7, because you never know what you might see below. Lions love this area and are often found resting or walking along the H7 early in the mornings. The prides in this area are actually known for bringing down giraffes on the tar road, something I've seen here on more than one occasion. Okay, so what's the best route to drive once you get past all the chaos close to camp? One option is to stick along the Timbavati River by driving north along the S39 gravel road to Timbavati picnic site and then back down towards Hngaravana waterhole and Nsimani dam before heading back west. This is a beautiful drive with stunning riverine scenery, but I must admit I very seldom see more than general game on the S39 and S40 gravel roads. Personally, I prefer to do a larger loop via Muzanzeni picnic site, the S126 Sweni road, and back along the tar roads and Nsimani Dam all the way to Open. Like I said before, be on the lookout for cheetahs when you turn off from the H7 tar road onto the S36 gravel road. They love this large open area. Rather than turning straight onto the S126 Sweni Road, first drive a little bit further south to Shimangwaneni Dam. No matter what the season, it often attracts a lot of buffalo, which in turn has a tendency to attract lions. I always stop at Muzanzeni to stretch my legs before heading east on the S126 Sweni Road. This road is great for lions, elephants, buffalo, and general game. And there's a little loop road around a rocky outcrop about halfway along it where you stand a good chance of spotting leopard. The eastern tip where it opens up and Lala palms become more dominant is one of the most scenic in the whole region. Look out for Casper the white lion as you drive north towards Satara on the tar road, for this falls within his territory. This will obviously only be relevant until he passes away, but it is important to note that the lion prides of Orpen and Satara have often given birth to white cubs in the past, and could well do so again in the future. The drive back to Orpen along the H7 takes you past Nsimani Dam, where you not only stand a great chance of seeing large herds of elephants and general game, but also one of the resident leopards that are often found in the vicinity of the water. If you have time, Bobby Arnskran's viewpoint about 17 kilometers from Orpen is a nice place to stretch your legs and get a bird's eye view of the Timbavati River. Look out for wild dogs hunting in the road as you approach Orpen. They are frequently seen here early in the mornings and very late in the afternoons. 
Thank you so much for watching right to the end. If you enjoy these Kruger videos of mine, please consider popping into my supporters page and buying me a coffee, which is a small once-off donation of $3 per cup. Or show long-term support by becoming a pack member for only $5 a month. All these donations are used to travel to new awesome destinations and to create more and better safari videos. Remember to also leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let me know in the comments what you like about Open.